Hello everyone, I'm Jo Good and this is The Sheer Luck Show, which is dedicated to our gold viewers. Coming up on today's show is an interview on hair health with the hair care royalty, the wonderful Annabelle Kingsley. And a super fun day out with me and lots of goodness and chat and fun, basically. First of all, I'm delighted to say that I'm being joined by none other than the wonderful choreographer, the theatre director, and the beloved original Strictly judge, Dame Arlene Phillips. Also, the skincare brand, brand founder, sorry, Karen Cummings Palmer. Girls, I'm so overexcited, I'm actually stuttering. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's, to be here. it's lovely to have you here. And we need to let everyone know, before we even started the show, we were just gossiping upstairs about wouldn't it be disastrous if we all ended up wearing the same clothes? <gasps> but has that happened to you? It's just happened to me very, very recently. Please tell everyone this story. I was actually lucky enough to be given uh, an Olivier, and I couldn't believe it, an award. And I turned up in the vampire's wife dress, the dress of a lifetime in pink. And as I arrived in red carpet, I'm looking to the right, and there's one in gold. <laughs> and I proudly carried on in my pink dress and then looked to the left and there's one in silver. There were three of us. How fabulous. And then but gold and you know what? The dress is so fabulous. It's like you've joined a club when you have one of their dresses. I've got a black one now. It is the most stunning dress. But yes, it's that awful thing of... And I was going on stage as well because I was getting an award and I was like, everyone's going to have seen this dress before, but... And I think, and Karen, you said, what is it we're meant to say if that happens to the other people? Like you've all got the most fabulous taste. Like you, you, have, you do a selfie together, yes. right? Yes. 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 And you celebrate it. Yes. And you we make did, the most of it. We did one of those in the, in the ladies' room. Good for you. Embrace it. That's what yes. I say. Um, talking <laughs> of culture, and I know, Arlene, you've been extremely busy because you've just, well, not just, earlier on this year, choreographed Guys and Dolls at the Bridge Theatre yes. to rave reviews. So I'm going to ask both of you what you've been seeing culturally, you know, exhibitions, theatre, movies. I guess you're going to say Guys and Dolls is a must see for everyone. It true. I mean, it truly, truly is. In all of my years of choreography, and I have had some good reviews, never has anything like this um, been something I've been involved in. It has experienced loaded it's extraordinary and we've got a phenomenal cast and it's so different it is immersive you can be on the floor with the sets going up and down and surrounding you and being part of the show itself or you can sit in the seat and and it's it's quite different quite extraordinary i'm in love with it and they've gone on extending the length of time it's supposed to be in the bridge theater because it's so sold out. I, I've got to see it. Karen, are you tempted? I'm, well, I'm very tempted. It's an absolute yeah. must-see yeah. now. It's culture with joy. And if you think of your... Um, you're a legendary choreographer. So you brought... For me, I trained as a dancer. And you brought American-style dance truly to this country, I think, in every sense. And do you use that in Guys and Dolls? Um, well, Guys and Dolls is set in the 50s. And that actually has in all of the original productions... Uh, the, the greatest choreography you've ever seen. But how could it be different? If I'm going to do a traditional musical, it has to have an edge. And I'm working with the amazing James Cousins. And together, we've devised... It looks like it's 50s, but it's so now. It certainly has an edge. And the audiences are cheering and screaming. We've got Marisha Wallace oh. in, the, in the big dance numbers. Just killing it. Love um, her. Absolutely love yeah. her. So there we go. Five stars for Guys and Dolls mm -hmm. and a must-see. Karen, what have you been to see, read, watch recently? Um, so recent, I mean, To Kill a Mockingbird, which I thought was just exceptional. Um, brilliant, moving, all, all of the above. Uh, and then I, I saw most recently, a couple of weeks ago, um, Ain't Too Proud, the story of the Temptations, I have to say, I wasn't, you know, it's not something that I would have thought on top of my list, but the music is just outstanding. It was, su it was such joy, mm, to your point, right? Yeah. It was such joy. So that was wonderful. Um, but something that I saw, which is a little bit different, I was recently in, in New York, and um, I was there mostly for, for business, but I, I, I had the pleasure of going to see an artist in her studio, um, an artist called uh, Delphine Delalio, and she is, her, her form is photography. 
And what is so beautiful about her work is it's a real celebration of the female form, the female body. And you can see it elevated in everything that she does. So she, she kind of, you know, when you see artists that really, you know that they really see beauty yeah. in mm. us all. Yes. Um, so that was really amazing. And she not only, you know, she not only looks at women, sees women, but she also puts herself in the center of her, of the narrative. Oh, wow. So it's really great. And she's coming to Somerset House. She's so. coming to Somerset yes. House. That's a very good yeah. tip. I mean, I'm so bad at seeing art exhibitions. Oh, you have to see the Hockney exhibition at King's Cross, oh, yes. which you are surrounded in this world of David Hockney in 3D. You live it. You live, you feel, you're in a Hockney world. Amazing. It's another and, great and, art exhibition. And you talk see. about King's Cross, so this is the whole new development at King's Cross yes, that has jazz, yes, yes. jazz concerts and jazz uh, caps. And, in the summer. Totally, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. A, yeah, an amazing place yes, to go. Amazing. And, and just talking about Hockney, Everyone knows I love dogs. I'm obsessed with dogs. There is a wonderful <laughs> art exhibition at the Wallace Collection called Portraits of Dogs. And Hockney has exhibited there his miniature little, dachshund. Yeah, yeah, his little yeah. miniature dachshund. So, How, yeah. yeah. So, lovely choice of things to go and do. Um, we can't waste the fact that we have got this wonderful um, skincare and beauty expert here. So, we're going to be talking about beauty and your must haves in just a moment. But first, if you have concerns about thinning hair, and I think I certainly do as I've got older, or anything to do with aging and hair loss, then the next interview is just for you. I chatted to Annabelle Kingsley, daughter of the famous hair expert, Philip Kingsley, about tips and tricks to maintain your crowning glory. This is the feature we have all been waiting for. I am so pleased to say that I am with the brand president and the consultant trichologist from Philip Kingsley, Philip's daughter, the wonderful Annabelle Kingsley. Hello. Hello. It's such a pleasure to be here. Do you know, I think there can be no better ambassador. I mean, look <laughs> at your own hair. Is that genetic or is it because you've got the knowledge? It's, it's a bit of both, but I, I do make a, a big effort with my hair. I do a lot of pre-shampoo treatments, I heat style it minimally, I take supplements, I try and eat well, I kind of do everything that I can. Can we, I mean, we could sit here for hours talking about female hair loss. Yes. Suffering hair loss in a woman is a major disaster, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it, it's just so linked to our sense of self, our well-being. Everyone, you know, says, you know, my hair was my thing and I just don't feel like me anymore. Good hair day is an expression we all use for feeling yes. great, you know? Yeah. So if you're having a bad hair day, if you're losing your hair, psychologically that is devastating. It is, yeah. Is it women my age who are more likely to start suffering hair loss? Um, androgenic alopecia, it's linked to androgens, which are male hormones, okay. and it occurs when hair follicles on your scalp in pattern areas are sensitive to normal levels of androgens, so normal levels of male hormones or testosterone. When the sensitivity is present, hair follicles very gradually miniaturize. It's called follicle miniaturization. And when a hair follicle is smaller, it produces this hair that's slightly finer and shorter, and on it progresses. So with each hair growth cycle, your hair gets ever so slightly finer and a little bit shorter. So when you hit puberty is the first big hormonal shift, both estrogen and testosterone are produced. So if you have a very high sensitivity, you know, I've, I have clients as young as 13. And then again, during pregnancy, that's why you see that most women will see this massive increase in yeah, hair density. Yeah. And that's because estrogen levels rise. Estrogen is a very hair friendly hormone. Um, and then postpartum, when estrogen drops, all of those hairs that were maintained shed at once. And then you have menopause. Mm -hmm. When um, testosterone levels, they don't rise, but estrogen in relation to testosterone, estrogen decreases. So you have a more androgenic or a male hormone heavy environment and you don't then have the protection that estrogen offers to hair follicles. So a lot of women at that point leading up to menopause and then as we enter menopause find their hair thins. So what everyone is longing for me to ask is, is it reversible? Let's look at my age group or 
premenopause or perimenopause? Or would HRT help? Postmenopause, would anything help? Mm -hmm. Well, so HRTs, some are um, very hair friendly and they can help. Others can be detrimental and others will have no impact. Is there anything we can do? I mean, we, you read a lot about biotin, you read a lot about diet, you, you, you know, lifestyle. Stress definitely can impact, it can impact both. So there are different types of hair loss. There's, um, the two main ones are female pattern and telogen effluvium, which is excessive daily hair shedding. And stress can actually trigger, a, trigger telogen effluvium and worsen female pattern. So stress um, raises cortisol levels and that in turn can raise testosterone levels. So right. that can exacerbate density changes. When you are stressed, so your gut bacteria can be disrupt disrupted, you aren't um, metabolizing or absorbing nutrients as you ought, you might be stress eating, you might be reaching for foods of little nutritional value, you might be skipping meals and nutrition is so important to hair health and growth. What are the key foods? What are the magic foods we should be eating? I think that there's no magic, there's no magic food. It Damn. is, sorry. It's about eating a balanced, colourful diet. So and you said before we came on this afternoon, you said, and stop limiting the amount of carbohydrates. Yes. Can you believe that? Carbs are good. <laughs> Complex carbohydrates are what gives you that easily accessible, slow release energy that's needed for wow. consistent hair cell production. Can we talk about products? The elasticizer, your dad created the elasticizer yes. for Audrey Hepburn. He did. Yes. And there's some I don't, statistic, one is sold every minute all yes. over the world. And would it help um, any age of hair? Yes, it adds moisture, it adds strength back into the hair. It even adds body, which seems kind of counterintuitive with a conditioner, but because you're applying it pre-shampoo, you're leaving it on enough, long enough for the ingredients to penetrate and it plumps every strand with moisture, which gives it that bounce. Are there any effective treatments that we should be looking at? Definitely. I would say minoxidil is excellent. Um, it is the only FDA approved or proven treatment for female and male pattern hair loss. It helps to extend the growth phase of the hair growth cycle. Um, and at our clinic in London, we have a bespoke mix of minoxidil and um, hormones. So you have minoxidil lengthening the hair growth cycle and you have hormones acting on as antiandrogens, so helping to protect the hair follicle from the effects of male And hormones. what can we do? What supplements could we take? So a really good all-round multivitamin and mineral supplement, we make one called Density Healthy Hair Complex, and it contains all the vitamins and minerals. And it has iron, vitamin D, uh, zinc, vitamin B12, and vitamin C, and all at levels that are... What about the scalp? Because that's very much alive. What can we do for a healthy scalp? Well, your scalp is skin. If your scalp is in poor condition, your hair will not grow as well as it's capable of. Flaky scalp can cause increased daily hair shedding. It can also, really? yeah, it can also impact the integrity of hairs as they emerge from the follicle so that they aren't um, as strong as they could be. There's nothing wrong with washing your hair every there day. There is absolutely nothing wrong with what, it, I like to, I wish the term hair washing was changed to scalp cleansing because yeah, that's yeah. the aim, you're cleansing a living tissue. There's nothing wrong with cleansing your scalp or your hair every day, but it does depend on what you're doing to your hair afterwards. So if you are having to heat style or straighten your hair every time you shampoo, then the good of shampooing will be outweighed by the damage of styling. So it's about finding that balance. So just to finish, for anyone watching, three tips. Cleanse your scalp. Cleanse your scalp. Eat well. Mm -hmm. Lay on the mashed potato. <laughs> yes, exactly. And what else? One final one. Um, if you're concerned, go go and see a specialist. First. You know, I found this absolutely fascinating. And all the way through this, I've been studying your hair. There's not one split end on hair this length. Not one split end. I use elasticizer twice a week and our bond builder. I, I'm, I'm obsessive. Thank you so much, Annabelle. Thank you for having me. It was such a pleasure.
So that is our hair covered. Now let's talk about skin and beauty, and we can't waste the opportunity having these two gorgeous ladies with us. So I would love your skincare and beauty tips. Starting off with you, Karen, three must-have products. Three must-have products. Okay, so first of all, can I just, I think about skincare as layered. Mm -hmm. So you've got to do internal, and then you've got to do tools, and then you've got to do topicals. So... The one from each, right, must Mr. have. <laughs> and there are, too. Like yeah. I do, literally, I do like 20 things in a day. I say that I'm probably the most, the sort of highest maintenance, lowest maintenance person, i.e. haven't had anything done invasively, but do a lot just daily. Good for you. So um, internally, you know, obviously good nutrition is a given. Um, but, uh, but in terms of what I might add to that, I do a supplement. It's an amino acid-based supplement called Lumity Life. AM, PM, so that's my one non-negotiable that I take. Um, tools, I love, um, is a machine called The Zip, which is nano-current electrical technology. And it's like, if you can imagine being able to do Pilates, like 10 Pilates sessions a day, so it's, it's working on your muscles, keeping everything up and firm, oh, that's what you I know, need. all of that. I need this. Um, and, and defined and toned, so I do that not daily, but certainly a few times a week. And then topically, I have to say, you know, I use my um, oil from my brand 79 Lux, which is, it's, it's essentially body care, but at the oil I use head to toe, and in fact, I have it on my face now. Oh my gosh, so, so one container can do the whole, or do you have separate yeah, face so to body? It, it, it's essentially, so it, it's all about elevating the skin on the body, right? so that we treat it with the same respect and love as the skin above yeah, of our course, neck. Of course. Um, but it just happens that all, an oil is an oil is an oil, and it's all about the quality. And so if you like an oil on your face, as I do, by day, not so much by night, people think that oils are heavy, use them at yeah, night, yeah, yeah. but actually they're also, um, they're like a sealant. So actually they're great for the day if the quality of the oil is appropriate for your skin. Fantastic. So I use it on slightly damp skin, gives you a little bit of a glow, you can put makeup right on top as I have today. So the makeup doesn't and move around. Well, that's, what I, that, that's what I have on today. But the and great glow, is, she glows. You can just put it head to toe. So those are my three essentials. If, you, if we can have a close up on Karen's legs because they are literally glowing. Oh, and that's what's so important because my legs in the winter, it's like a turtle's it's, skin. It's really oh easy God. to neglect. And I okay. actually used to have terrible, terrible skin. So, you know, it's all about working on the skin. Again, layered approach from the inside out. Can we just clock? Arlene's got notes. <laughs> is that cheating or what? No, no, it isn't. But I'm going three things. I've got actually sort of six. And I'm thinking, well, which of these <laughs> on this scrap of paper? I'm just so impressed you which don't need glasses. Three, um, you know, which three, because my skin is all important. Yeah, yeah. I'm like one step away or one week away of being 80, and I want my skin to be perfect. So I was told that if you've had spots when you're a teenager, and I did, your skin holds pretty well because you had an oily skin. Yeah. So Absolutely true. Just, yeah. just take it as you get older. Yeah. But my tips are, firstly, I have a daughter who... Um, as a makeup artist, and she said, Mum, you have to take all your makeup off at night. And personally, I do, but I am not afraid of soap and water, and most people are. Gosh, I don't, I, I don't think I've even looked at soap on my face um, Listen, for about I, 60 years. I promise you, because I have had little touches done on my face, but I've never... No, done no, any no. of this so you can see you haven't that's one I, I just sorry to butt in first of all i'm in shock as in, is karen about your age truly because i've known you for i've always thought we were contemporaries but also i think because you move so much i think you just move all the time which is i do keeps you I do. young but also why hasn't your neck gone like my neck oh, your neck I, so i don't i don't you know i don't like a lot of stuff but queen of youth just goes do, 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 and it holds, but if I could have anything done, it would be to do this. But they won't. No one will do this without doing, doing the whole this. Lot. And I don't want my eyes to move. So, but anyway, so that well, I suppose one is soap and water. Two is Queen of Youth. <laughs> um, well, when I'm going out, there's nothing like Chanel Le Lift, and you just get that on your face. And it just holds you together for the night. 
And that's a moisturiser. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. Yeah. I, so, I'm still thinking about your age, sorry, and your yeah. jawline. Because I've ended up, I've ended up looking a bit like my dog, which is a bulldog, and the, all the jowls <laughs> we're turning into each other. And I'm trying to do these neck exercises. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do yoga. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. yoga and the other thing that's really lovely is acupuncture. But I think you would really like the zip because that's because it's I, all about. I always say that you know, fine lines are not the enemy, right? Fine lines are just expressions of our humanity. But it's when it starts to drop that you know that's the the piece yeah. that we really want to take care of. And of course, you know, collagen, um, exercising, doing things like the zip, you know, an LED mask that all works. But it's so the focus really is on keeping all the elastin, the, the scaffolding of the face up as much as yeah. possible. But Arlene, I have Can to say you that ever when put it back when it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, Please I mean, tell us yes. You, I mean, you can definitely improve the appearance, but yeah. it's really about managing the process, yeah. right? So that we're all get we're all getting old, and it is absolutely a privilege. But it's about managing the process. But when you said your age, I have to say, you know, because I, I I was surprised, but I, I I try and sort of hold that down a little bit because I really want us all as a society to get to this stage where we really really embrace and celebrate age and we can see that there is currency not just in youth there is that plumpness mm. gorgeous glowy stuff but there's also currency in age so what I try not to do is say you look great for you no you yeah. just look great yeah but I have to say I'm still really no, surprised you, <laughs> you know it's really interesting because I did an article last Sunday I think it's coming out in one of the papers which talks about embracing age. And that's why I don't really want to do this. In my heart, I want to look young and I want to be perfect. But also, I want people to fall in love with age. And, and they don't at the moment. We don't see older people on TV all the time. Apart from this, thank we you, Sherlock. I mean, but this, I is young, this is rare. This is rare. And but it's getting it's, so much better. But yeah. It's, yeah. And it is, it is changing. But I also want to look as good as I can, but I also don't want to defy that I'm getting older. Yeah, I eat I think well, that's of course. The difference. I think it's look as good as you possibly can yeah. without defying it. And it's really interesting because I've been banging on about, I want to have my eyes done just so I look less tired. And somebody, one of my listeners said, but Joe, you'll lose the expression. You know, you mm. don't want to lose. I've, I've got yeah. all these wrinkles because I've laughed my way through and most of my life. Absolutely. <laughs> and, you know, and if I suddenly look different. That's a different yeah. sort of, isn't it, tribute to my life, yeah. basically. But you also look, but Joe, you also look great. You look great. You look beautiful. Yeah. You look so, Stunning. you're so magnetic. Oh, thank you. And I think that is the point, isn't it? It's not really about looking you know, much younger than your years. Mm. It's about having what I call the essence of youth. What is the essence of youth? It's transparency, it's flexibility, it's it's possibility, it's luminosity. You have all of those things. Ooh, Thank you. Luminosity. That, that's glowing. Luminous. And your legs have luminosity. Uh, can I just say, mm. just for myself, I just throw my tuppence worth in, um, it's so interesting what you say about this device because I go to Teresa Tami, there are other facialists, yeah. and she uses gadgets. And I was not invasive, but I always think if I'm going to have a facial, I want a machine. I just Completely. don't want someone doing this on my face. Yeah. I want a good old machine. That's what yeah. I'll pay for. I agree. Absolutely. There we go. Thank yeah, you, yeah. girls. That was so much fun. And how much did we learn? Now, on to a bit more of me. So, what do I love most? Popping around the high street, seeing what goodies I can find. Here we go. So, I am in the nucleus of the high street of central London. So, Oxford Circus, crossing Regent Street, Liberty Bell, you can hear the Liberty Bell. And I'm going to take you, not round Liberties, but to proper high street, more affordable prices. Come with me. It's Massimo Dutti, and I think it might be Spanish, but I love it. I really love it, and I do shop in here. Ah, all of this crochet is Mamma Mia. It's hippie chic. Ah, the Bermuda short. So look at the detail there. Pockets which I would never wear because I'm so short, so I won't get these. You need nice, long, tanned legs to get away with a pocket in a short. But beautiful material, beautiful cut, beautiful tailoring. 
Yep, lovely. With a coral, coral shirt. Be very nice. Beautiful orange. Oh my gosh, I love that. Now these are so useful. This is the sort of thing Massimo does, you know, these lovely little knitted waistcoats that go under jackets, can go with shorts. I'm going to take one of these because I just think they're really, really useful and they're everywhere this year. I've taken the Chanel box jacket. Always a winner. Very nice with a classic pair. Like those actually because they're not all linen, they're a linen mix. My mum always used to do this when I was shopping. She used to do this. No, we'll crease. And look, look how right she was. Beautiful apricot. I'm going to take one of these because these will look lovely with a navy short. I like that colour apricot. It's very, very flattering. Again, I'm just, just guessing at the sizes. Ah, oh, a white trench. Now that, how useful would that be? A white trench on a summer's night. Trench coats are wonderful. Um, and it's got a pleat at the back, which is great. I think that's it. I think that's what I'm going to try on. So this is the little crochet top. These are so useful. Obviously, I changed my bra. They are sleeveless and they're perfect. So you could wear them with a linen trouser. These are everywhere this year. You need a couple of these and they'll be really useful. My own blazer, love it. I'm gonna try the apricot shirt on now. So, how nautical and lovely is this apricot? You see, this is a bit too bright. This for me is perfect. And I love these linen trousers with a pocket. Slightly too long, but everything's too long on me, so I'll get those taken up. Um, I like, because of the waistband and the pleating, I want to show this. So I tuck it in at the front, leave it at the back. Really lovely. Okay, now I'm gonna put on the trench coat and the slinky dress. This. Have you ever thought of a summer trench coat in linen? I mean, this, ah. Oh, Given the summer that we're having, how wonderful to have something that suits the season. Instead of putting on your old winter mac, you're wearing a summer trench coat. I just love it. So this is the slip dress. I mean, just imagine walking into a party when it's been raining saying, sorry I'm late but I'm wearing my trench, and underneath, I'm wearing my evening wear. It's stunning. Stunning. So, now, some may say I'm a little bit out of my comfort zone, but all my mates, the people I work with, turn up in the most wonderful outfits from Zara. So, follow me, let's see what they've got. Look at this. See, what I love is evening wear in the daytime. So that has its own body. It, you could almost stand that on the ground, it would stand up. That's when you get quality, really quality fabric in a high street store. No, no, no. Ah, now this is interesting. This is literally, when you're watching the gold show, this is what I'm wearing. And mine is from Trilogy and it cost Probably about 350, 89. Now the trousers are wide leg, whereas mine are very tapered and they're 32 quid. So that's basically a suit for 100 quid. Oh my gosh, see? So sex in the city. Fun theatrical colour. I love this sort of thing. I'm gonna take this and try this on. This is very, very sheer, so. What would be nice is to have maybe a swimming costume, your bikini, you know, a walk from the pool to sit at the bar. It seems to be in a cotton, which is lovely. The Breton stripe, always useful. I'm really tempted. But my mother says when you wear an elasticated waist, you've given up on life. 
so maybe not. Oh my gosh, look at this. 49 pounds, look how gorgeous that is. I am gonna take that. I mean, I know it's got no sleeves, but I just, I'm an old hippie and we used to wear these sort of things. And we would either crochet them ourselves or our mum would do it. So that would have been hand crocheted. It's amazing. These, I think, are certainly more flattering for my age and more of what I'm looking for. And they're extra small, so yes. Oh, I'm gonna take this as an option because I've got the knitted red one, but the black one, because my swimming costumes are black, my two piece is black, I'm gonna take this as well. Trailing everything. Do you know, I think I might go and try these on because <laughs> I can't hold anymore. There's a lot of men changing in there, so I've come out here to give them some privacy. This is Mamma Mia on the beach. I absolutely love it. It's lined, so you're not seeing everything underneath. You can see a bit of the bra. This is what I wore up and down the King's Road or on the beach in Corfu in the 70s. It's beautiful. You'd wear it year after year after year. I sound like my mother, but this is a hit. Oh my gosh, I'm about to show my underwear, a thong and an old white bra in Bond Street Zara. Can you believe it? But just imagine this is a really nice two piece or a one piece. It takes a lot of imagination, but I love it. This just wandering around the pool, just screw this up and put it in your suitcase. The hat adds height. I like the hat. It also, so there's an Alice band, it won't fly off. But this is a cotton, it's a cotton knit. I love it. So, this is everything I was looking for. These are the shorts I think I can get away with. So they're a Bermuda short with a lovely hem. Um, the lovely red and white Breton, perfect fit, lovely cotton. My own YSL belt which I think goes really nicely. This is my own jacket. Oh, this is just perfect. Perfect to go from work to dinner, from the city to the coast. I just love this outfit. Yeah, definitely a thumbs up. The guy in the changing room said, I just need to live somewhere hot. I love summer clothes. A lovely cotton knit, nice low back. The shoes I love. You watch when I put them on. They're wonderful. They're just joined together, so I have to shuffle. Just absolutely love it. And it's these sort of um, novelty pieces that I am really captivated by in here. Not the classics, but novelty. Great basket. So I shuffle off. I once lived next door to a girl who had a black, a little black dress, an LBD, to die for. And I didn't know her, but I met her on the stairs and I said, where did you get that? And she said, cause I raced, I was a woman on a mission in here and just went, oh, why have I never been in here? Now, this is my go-to for high street summer dresses. And I can't wait to see what their summer collection is all about. Oh, see? Oh gosh, I love it. So it is a dress, basically. It's a shirt dress with the buttons completely covered right up to the neck. And it's this, I don't know what they call this cotton, but it's, I love it. It's like a finished sheen to the cotton. Love it. Oh, I love a halter neck because I quite like my shoulders. Love that. Right, okay, let's move on to some color keep being drawn to this black cotton. Such a fan of hers. Amazing. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I've been down by the high street. I was trying to find you. But I'm, I found I'm you. usually on the high street buying I something. I know. I found you because of the mothership. <laughs> the mothership. <laughs> it's almost like I paid you to come out and do that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, love her. Bye. Bye. Keep that in. This is the perfect dress for a short woman. Look at it. Look at that detail. And on here. Oh, I love it. I love it. 
Ah, oh, I'm taking both. Don't like ruching up the side. Ah, oh, these shorts with a little half jacket. Yes, like the Bretons. Finer stripe from the Breton. Oh my gosh, Charlotte Collins trousers, everybody. I'm gonna try these on for Charlotte Collins. But look how cute that is. Lovely, loose fitting denim top. Really love it. Okay. Dropping everything. Apart from this, I love this. Just because it's so loose fitting. Just love it. And as I said, this is pure Charlotte Collins trousers. And a sort of um, a take on Bottega. Basically lovely. Really lovely little clutch. Whoops, and the glasses as well. Now, I'm not too sure about this. So I've been trying on shorts. I would take them up to about there. It's nice, I mean, I like the cream. I like the pleating. I like the jacket. The shorts are worrying me. This is the Breton shirt, which I like very much because it's a narrow stripe and it's very, very thick. So I like that. Like the jacket, don't like the shorts. I'm gonna try on a dress. So this is what I would call a typical cos dress. Beautiful cotton, cotton that has a real body to it. Two front pockets, love a pocket in a dress. This feature continues around the back. Beautiful color. I love a cos dress. Two members of the team have been influenced by my choices and are buying two items. Um, yes, there you go. The Charlotte Collins pants and one of the cotton tops because the cotton is so, oh gosh, it's so thick, it's beautiful. Anyway, I'm going back on Regent Street. This has been very educational for me. If I was to be absolutely honest, Missimo would probably be my shop of choice if I was going to do a big shop for summer clothes, followed by Cos, followed by Zara. So yeah, I've loved it. I'm hot, desperate for a drink, and um, we're gonna chat holidays with the crew. Bye. I hope you loved that as much as I did. We should really be proud of the British High Street and we should support it. There are some amazing pieces. So let's talk to Arlene and Karen about this fashion. How important is fashion? I mean, we're heading into summer, coming out of spring. First of all, Arlene, do you shop seasonally? Um, I shop all the time, I'm afraid. <laughs> what can I say? I'm not a seasonal shopper, but there's always must-haves. I can't, I can't pass Zara without stepping inside, or even H&M. Um, those clothes you can get, as you say, seasonally, that just work perfectly. When you've got an interview, when you've got somewhere to go, you don't want to spend a lot of money, and you can go pick something up, and it just goes snap. But I always pass them on and make sure that like a library, I've bought this, but now it can be borrowed and shared and passed on. And do you share, I mean, you've admitted you share clothes with your daughter. I, that must be a joy. Does she borrow from you and you from her? Um, mainly, I borrow from my daughter. Ah. She has her <laughs> style and my, my style, I mean, I love designer. I don't buy much of it. And if I do, it's generally shopped in a last season or in a shop that is pre-loved, whatever they call it, that's my designer. I love designer. Um, Abby, my daughter that I borrowed from, is casual. This is one of hers. And um, so you're the same size? Um, we're pretty much the same size, so it works. Um, but we don't actually wear each, each other's clothes. I wear hers. Ah. <laughs> How wonderful to have a daughter to borrow clothes from. Karen, you're in Victoria Beckham, yes. which is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. 
How often do you buy clothes? Actually, very rarely. I'm really not a shopper at all. I mm. probably buy one or two pieces a year. And I've gone for years where I haven't bought anything. Um, so my thing is, I have to really love it. Like, I've got to think... Um, I can't, you know, I've got to sort of slightly dream about it, which sounds terrible. But if I'm, so I'll see something, um, if I become a bit obsessed with it over the next couple of days, then I'll go and buy it. I never buy full price, full retail. Um, so it's always on sale. I'm not worried about, you know, trends. Well, you're going to say you haggle all the time. No, I'm not paying that. <laughs> I'll so, I the so I'll buy on sale. So yeah. I'll buy things that are, are pretty expensive yeah. at a significantly reduced Good. price. Yeah. And then I, I don't, I also don't really do seasonal. So I think it has to take me from spring to early spring to late autumn. So I need to be able to wear it most of the time, apart from maybe extreme weathers. And from eight to eight. And I really, you know, I repeat a lot of clothes because I think of them, you know, I don't think, oh gosh, that's really old. I think that has memories. That took me yeah. there. I met They're that like person friends. in that. Yeah, and I quite like that. And I also sort of quite like, you know, oh yeah, I wore that, you know, I've had that for 10 years. And I also think now, I think in terms of, you know, when I hear people say, oh, I've, I'm buying a new winter coat, that feels to me like really kind yeah. of strange. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I think of it as like a, a winter coat should last a decade. Mm. I mean, I've, 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 my winter coats are sort of 15, 12, 15 years old. So I think now, if I buy something, will I be able to wear it at the end of this decade? It's a really interesting. Ooh, and and I, I absolutely get, if you buy yeah. quality, um, price per wear, it's so important. They don't owe you a cent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, also, yeah. It, it's like revisiting friends. I love opening my wardrobe and seeing my winter coats, and I just think, there you are, yeah. my friends, you know, and I've invested in them. Yeah. And as long as the moth, doesn't get to them, which is my bet noir. <laughs> what is it, can I just ask, what is it you most loathe? I'm going to kick off with, and I hope I don't offend anyone watching, leggings. Leggings are great. Arlene, you probably wear them all the time for rehearsals. But I no, can't no, no, bear no, no, people no, no, wearing no. them around the no, shop. No, 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 no. I think to, to wear leggings <laughs> um, is brave. <laughs> to bear, <laughs> it's next door to being naked. It is. It's it next door is. to being naked. You see everything. And and I I I you know give me a tracksuit bottoms. They're great to dance in. They work really well with trainers. And talking of trainers, I mean I'm obsessed with the Gucci Adidas collection. Not just the trainers. Those low <laughs> heels. What do I want for my birthday? If anybody's got a lot of money to spend, oh my gosh, goodness. But yeah. Tracksuit bottoms, trainers, loose top, that's me, daily. Any bet noirs from you, Karen? Anything? You're not a love-hate person. I know you probably don't hate a lot because it's toxic to hate. <laughs> but is there anything you just think, I can't bear? Either a colour or leggings? <laughs> um, I, 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 think I, I think I don't really appreciate too many rips in jeans. Yes. You know, <laughs> like, do we have to, like, have, you know, especially when, when you know they're fashion? super oh, expensive. Yes. And, like, they're, you know, there's hardly any denim. Um, but I, I think it's just anything that people do not appear comfortable in. Yeah. You know, when people are like, they can't walk in the, like, just them wear the flats. Yeah. You've got amazing flats now. You know, the, the dresses that you've got to sort of put, you know, so I yeah. just think being comfortable is, is being chic. And can we talk about trainers? Because they have become, you know, I can remember when I was on air talking about you can't go in the Shard, you can't go into these five-star luxury places in either denim or trainers. That was literally yeah. a few years ago. Now it's status. Absolutely. It? It's all about style. Trainers that you wear now is you've got to look good in your trainers, but they've changed the way people walk, you know, yeah. the way people put their feet down and the, the laziness in the walk. Um, I personally love a trainer. I live in them. Too many in the house. I can't bear to look at the floor. <laughs> um, jeans. I don't get jeans because really? they're one waist size. Mm. So if you like yo-yo like I do, the jeans are no good. Yeah. You're either Ooh, or they're hanging. Karen, I jeans? I like a good jean. I bought a pair of Prada jeans in the sale, obviously, <laughs> um, about 18 years ago. <gasps> they still look brand new. I wear them. I've worn them, brought them out every year. Um, so I like, and that's a sort of slightly more tailored jean. And then I'll have a, I'll have a frame jean, you know, that don't, you know, I, I probably on my like fourth pair, so maybe they'll last 
two to three years of wearing them wow. all the time. But I, but, I, but I wear them all the time. And in terms of trainers, I mean, I love a trainer and I, I like walking. So I, I wear, you know, I do all kind of heel heights all the time. But I do think that trainers, it's a bit of a privilege because I kind of think that you get to a certain level in, you know, your career or a certain age or in a certain environment where it's fine to wear trainers. You can walk into any fancy place in your trainers, but it still requires something else. Quite often you'll Choice. see people... Um, it, yeah, the privilege of choice and also, you know, balancing it out. You'll see people walk into a fancy place with trainers, but, you know, maybe a really serious designer handbag yeah. or a bit of jewellery. So it's still a little yeah. bit of a, you know, Very you, good it's point. a kind of balancing out thing. But I, I really welcome the fact that um, we can be comfortable in any environment now. Yeah. And it's so interesting about you buying Prada jeans that you've had for 10 years, did you Oh, say? no, more like 16. 16 years. Wow. Because I, I once interviewed a guy who was an expert on denim, and this is going to offend a lot of people, sorry. He went, never wash it. Never, ever wash it. Really? The moment you wash it, you kill it. Just hang them out to air oh and then gosh. put them back in the wardrobe. Now, that is a risk, but, um, yeah, he said the wow. moment you wash Denim, you've killed half its life. Well, I've been washing them, oh. washing my jeans um, on hand wash. Yeah. Fairly regularly. <laughs> She's wow. She's jeans. Yeah, I don't, I don't really get jeans. But I remember, Arlene, I, don't you remember the first toweling tracksuits from the dance centre in Covent Garden? Yeah. So going back years. We are. They were literally, you weren't oh, ball gang. These were uh, toweling tracksuits yeah. with drawstrings yeah. everywhere. And yeah. we just wore them, didn't we? Oh, we, did, we thought we were so, it was so cool. And with a leg warmer. <laughs> and with a leg warmer. But they were so easy to wear. Yeah. Sometimes tucked into a leg warmer, a sight you should never, <laughs> never see again. Ever repeat. Never, ever, but... But so comfortable. Yes. And then they became fashionable. Yes. Juicy cash. Juicy couture. Juicy couture. When, yeah. Oh, yeah. we're yeah. to something. Yeah. And I wish I'd saved all my oh juicy. Oh, my God, worth a Oh, fortune. now. Because you oh. must have had every colour. Every colour. And the jackets. And the zip-ups. And the... Yeah. <laughs> I enjoyed chatting to you girls so much. So could I thank you both, Karen and Arlene, and of course, the wonderful Annabelle. And I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, and I think the girls did. Um, we're Absolutely. going to be back with a regular Sheer Luck show next week with fashion, beauty, food, and lots more. And in the meantime, we would love it if you could comment below. Please give a comment below. We read them, we answer them. Give us a thumbs up, and please subscribe. If you haven't, please subscribe. Have a wonderful day, wherever you are, from all of us. Bye. Say goodbye, girls. Bye. 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 Bye.